Okay. Today, let me get rid of this. It's not making an annoying sound. Today, we're going to talk about Uber exchanges. Uh, pretty much everything you need to know about Uber exchanges. Uh, it's going to be pretty exhaustive. I do have some notes uh, just so that it's not complete, just random rambling. And it actually, at least, hopefully, has some kind of understandable flow to it. But yeah, uh, first things first, uh, what is an exchange? So an exchange or an Uber exchange is basically just anytime both teams use Uber um, at the same time. Now, there is some gray area to this um, that we'll touch on a bit later as well. Like if one team uses earlier and just really has a tough time getting the other team to force, then um, eventually they do force. Like, is that still an exchange? Like in some cases, yeah, kind of. In other, in other cases, you might consider it like a failed exchange by the team that used first and tried to get that force. Um, so there's some gray area, but by and large, an exchange is any time both teams just use at the same time. Um, and let's talk about the actual literal mechanics of Ubers and exchanges because it does come into play. As you might expect, having a longer Uber is advantageous when both teams are using Uber because if your Uber ends last, that means that there is some period of time in which you're invincible and the other team isn't, right? Um, so, what determines how long Ubers are, are flashes. And what a flash is, is any time that a medic with Uber puts the beam on a target, that counts as a flash. Uh, so, if, um, if there's an exchange going on, let's say on mid here, right, and some team is getting aggro into a team here, and they just hard focus the demo, the other team uses on their demo, and then the pocket scout takes some damage, and then they have to flash the pocket scout as well to keep them from dying. Um, that would be a flash onto the pocket scout. And flashes decrease the amount of remaining Uber you have left by usually half a second, but in some cases, if you're like reflashing a target that was already kind of Ubered, um, it might be a little bit less than that. It can get very complicated, but generally more flashes means a shorter uber so in exchanges uh, you want to avoid flashing players as much as possible uh, of course there's going to be some times where you have to flash people just to keep them alive but that's mostly due to a positioning error on their part or your team's part uh, but by and large you want to avoid flashes and a technical thing about flashes that uh, i think is only recently pretty well understood is that um what constitutes a flash is kind of, it, it, there was some misconceptions about it because if that same situation, right, where the demo gets used on and then the scout has to get flashed, people would consider that as they flashed once. Um, but the way it actually works is that f the first literal flash would have been on the demo and the first flash doesn't decrease your Uber. So it still would have been like a solo Uber full eight seconds. Um, if they flash the scout, that counts as one flash. If they reflash the demo a lot of people wouldn't consider that a flash because the same number of people are ubered right but it's not just about the number of people ubered it's about the the flashes themselves so that would actually count as a third flash so start on the demo and then uh pocket scout then back to the demo that's three flashes total of course the first flash doesn't count for anything so that's going to be like a full second off of the uber um which is eight seconds normal, so second, seven second Uber. Um, which is important because you can reflash the same target and it will still count as if you were flashing another player. Which in some cases, uh, like if a pocket scout, for instance, here in Saw, was taking an exchange into a team holding saw and they just really went fast around the corner got used on but broke beam because they hugged this corner too tight and then got reflashed that would count as a flash and would decrease the time of your uber so uh avoiding flashes is pretty important in uber exchanges just because uh it is pretty important how long your uber lasts that's going to determine a lot of things so understanding how flashes work and avoiding them is pretty important 
Next on the list, uh, another another mechanic, I guess, is just scout speed. Um, kind of, I mean, we've been playing it for a while now. Um, and by a while, I mean like <laughs> years and years. But uh, medics run faster when they are beaming scouts, meaning that, you know, scout is a pretty solid class for exchanges. Um, just in the fact that you can have a lot of range just by moving very fast and also... Um, you can pick your your positioning for a post fight um, usually a lot better than than in other in other cases um, and that's the next thing your post uber positioning where you actually end your uber is one of the if not the most important part about exchanges uh, ubers in general where you end is extremely important and exchanges are no different um, because it's just going to be the difference between you getting caught and not. Um, let's say in some imaginary example here on Snake Water that... Um, actually, you know what? I played a... I rang for a team last night, and we can think of something uh, from that game that actually happened to me. So I was holding this door close. Um as one does when it's even ubers just holding top right let's even set the traps up i know i'm on blue team defending red last but whatever um and they sent a sack and this sack got the force uh but let's picture an example where the med doesn't force but it's just like so far back that they can't get to me um the team takes an exchange through this door or rather just takes an uber kills me let's say they get the force with the exchange right um, so in this in this situation, the the team attacking here will either have a great situation or a terrible situation, and the only difference is what post Uber positioning they take or where they end the Uber. So if they end the Uber um, way deep in where they got the where they got the force, um, then they're just going to get collapsed on by by all the defending players versus. Maybe they do have the time to, to be in this doorway a little bit and already have a positioning setup, uh, in which case that's totally fine. If not, just straight up leave. Reheal the players if they got weak. You can rotate doors or push back in because they got that demo pick in the exchange, right? So this is just illustrating that the post Uber positioning or where you end the Uber is really, really, really important and makes all the difference in whether that exchange or rather the post exchange fight uh, goes well or goes poorly. So yeah, where you end the Uber, very, very important. And that's kind of all the early stuff. So um, we're going to talk about where exchanges or like what exchanges look like. Um, we're going to cover Koth first because Koth exchanges are much more straightforward um, and easy to understand versus 5CP exchanges where there's kind of a lot of nuance and a lot of different situations and it can be um, pretty tough to, to wrap your head around. So we will load into a product here, which is kind of the, the standard Koth for exchanges. Um, you know what? Maybe I want to go to ClearCut actually now that I load in because I guess um, there's some stuff on ClearCut that uh, I could illustrate that, that doesn't really exist on product. Product exchanges are kind of um, I don't want to say one dimensional but, but can be very samey. We kind of just do one thing. Whereas clear cut, you have a few more options for exchanges. So the way um, the way that exchanges work in Koth, well, Koth as a game mode is all about that central point. Whichever team has control of the point just wants to hold it as long as possible. And usually, the primary way that a team that doesn't have the point, but wants to have the point, obviously. Uh, the way that they get the point is... I mean, there's so many different like strategies and plans you can execute map by map and team by team and all this. But on a basic level, they boil down to pressuring, right? 
So whether that be in the case of Clearka, maybe like bombing a soldier behind and having them rebomb, maybe like hard pressure their roof, try and shove their roof alongside some cap time. Um, all in, in the case of Bagel, it might be a house shove in product. You might flank shove or you might rotate your heels to one side of point or, or what have you. But some semblance of pressure, some semblance of weakening the players that would otherwise hold the point in order to get cap time and over time convert that into a point capture, right? Okay, so with that in mind, if both teams have Uber, then the defending team kind of has an advantage with their Uber in the sense that uh, it's kind of a trump card, right? If, for example, here... Um, Let's say the other demo needs up some ammo, so they back up into the, to get some ammo. This is actually a favorite thing for me to do when I play this map, is if I see a player duck in for, for a pack, then you know I'm just sending off a sticky sink, trying to catch them when they walk back out. And let's say I don't kill the demo, but uh, I absolutely roll him, and he has to like back uh, or he has to just completely leave like get arrowed or something or just get a pack because he's like 50 hp can't fight and then with the demo down uh there's a ton of cat pressure going on maybe this soldier uh on the roof takes some damage and has to jump away as well and get a pack so now the point is just like not being held it's about to flip well the team that is defending the point can just take an exchange shoot the players on the point get a force by shooting at you know anyone shooting the demo or the medic or the main the main targets in a coth exchange just as a measure to like get the force guaranteed um they can just take that exchange stop the cap and you know force whatever flashes do whatever and then of course the po the the uber ending positioning very important you want to make sure you're at least ending on your side unless you have some major advantage in which case you can end on their side but in this case absolutely not end on your own side and what happens here well assuming it was just a scout solo uber and in some cases if you're having trouble guaranteeing a force which i'll talk about in 5 cp as well because it can apply to that uh, you might want to include a pocket soldier or a soldier in the exchange just because splash is going to be really really useful for guaranteeing forces but of course it comes at the liability of you're gonna at the very least gonna have to flash that soldier an extra time maybe flash back your scout as well so you're you're giving up uh multiple flashes on an uber you're already intending to use first right aggressively into them when they're trying to cap the point um so it's a little risky but uh will definitely be worth it if your scout has trouble getting the extra er, the the counter pop off in any case um during this uber this window of timing gives the demo time to get a pack, gives the soldier time to get a pack, and then get back in and begin to fight again for the point, as if that massive advantage that the attacking team had is now gone, right? So, because an uber is such a valuable asset for basically taking a team's winning efforts for the point for a point that's about to flip and just negating that giving everyone time to reheal or maybe just like reload maybe your demo just shot everything or is like low on ammo and like can't adequately fight for the point um cases like that where the point's about to flip absolutely just take your exchange uh you're buying yourself time buying yourself maybe space um just to get set back up and continue fighting for the point as normal so Ubers are a fantastic uh, defensive asset for a team that has control of the point and caught. So as a result, the attacking team doesn't want the other team to have Uber, meaning they're usually the ones initiating that exchange. So in the case of clear cut, uh, there's like multiple ways this could happen. First and foremost, if you're just like playing default um, with like med here, right? Uh, pretty central healing players and you get uber during this and it's even ubers then you can just take it across point with your scout shoot the demo shoot the medic shoot whoever uh you need to to get the force and then back up and then you can start that same thing of oh i'm gonna roll the demo like shoot the high will bomb soldier do all that stuff after ubers are out of the way because then you know that your efforts towards pressuring and capping the point are actually going to be I guess, quote unquote, permanent, or at the very least, they don't have an Uber to just negate it all. So getting Ubers out of the way is something that a lot of teams will do 
on on Koth when they need to, to cap the point. So, you can do it across the point. Uh, sometimes your team gets forced out entirely, but your med lives, so it's even ubers. In cases like this, yeah, they have the point, obviously, because, you know, why wouldn't they cap when you're when you're out? And you want to just approach and, and exchange immediately. In cases like this, you could come valley um, into shed and just pop through shed, uh, which has the advantage of already being quite forward when you use. And some teams actually will come kill box up uh, trench here and pop around this corner, which of course you might have to deal with spam. And stuff. Like all these have like trade-offs, of course, but this is very close in already. So uh, you're already very deep without using. It's going to be pretty easy to to get that force off, assuming you know nothing bad happens on the walk up. Um, but yeah, a, a, a go-to plan a lot of the time is getting those Ubers out of the way if you don't have the point yet, and that's kind of the, the primary um, use and I guess meta game of Uber exchanges on Koth. Now that's it for Koth. Uh, let's talk about five CP, and we're gonna jump into process here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, five CP is much more nuanced when it comes to exchanges, or at least you see a much, much more diversity of exchanges. Um, of course, it's a game mode with many more different states of the game than Koth. Um, so, let us begin with offensive exchanges. And when I say offensive, um, I have to be careful with my language here because I mean you are the team that is pushing, right? Not necessarily the team that is initiating the exchange, strictly the team that is pushing. Uh, a lot of the time this can be, well most of the time it's going to be the team with control of mid trying to get aggro in front or a team with like some advantage or, or just the team pushing, right, is going to be um, what I'm talking about here. So, first things first, if you are the one initiating the exchange, uh, getting the other team to actually use is really important. And that's kind of the first thing you're going to go for. Because from there, once it actually is an exchange, instead of just you using in, um, then you can start to actually understand what is happening, uh, who the exchange is better for, um, and, you know... That will inform your decision of where to end your Uber, where to go from there, uh, all that kind of stuff. So that's that's pretty important, uh, getting that force first. Um, usually, if you're the one aggro taking Ubers in <clears throat> for exchanges, um, you're going to tend to have a shorter Uber. Or at the very least, if not shorter, an Uber that ends last, which I guess is just more... That, that's what is actually important, is uh, the fact that your Uber is going to end first is pretty bad. Um... Because you use first. So if you use in and then get the force a second later and neither team flashes, then your Uber is going to end a second sooner than theirs. So uh, usually if you're taking Ubers in aggressively, then you want to be playing a pretty passive uh, post positioning. Um, a lot of alliteration there. You, yeah, you want to make sure that your Uber is ending somewhere pretty safe so that you can't be caught to the other team getting aggro um, with their, you know, late ending Uber. Um, yeah. And that's why a lot of the time you'll see, like, what you actually get in an Uber was is going to inform how you play that post. Because a lot of the time... The, an aggro uber itself is still going to have to leave at some point um, if it's taking aggro into a point. But if the uber's good and like gets value, they might be able to re-push in the post fight, um, which we'll talk about later. Um, so one example is if a doorway is just held really aggro, then you can exchange through it. Um, and... I can't think of really strong examples here in process, unfortunately. But there's going to be some cases where there's just, like, a ton of players clumped up right in front of the choke point. Um, and if you can force a ton of flashes, then you might be able to take an exchange there, force those flashes, 
and have Uber's end at roughly the same time, or maybe even yours end later. And instead of having to take a passive um, Uber ending position, you might be able to end through the doorway or maybe with some type of positioning to be able to take a fight on that point you're pushing into, right? Um, so it can be valuable there. Uh, likewise, if, yeah, in the case of uh, like snake water earlier, like get a pick on the demo or something, get the force off still. Yes, in those cases, you might, uh, you're, you're probably still gonna have to leave for the post um, and make sure your Uber ends where you're not you know, in and caught. But with that demo pick, yeah, you can absolutely refight later when uh, Ubers are no longer uh, a factor. So something to consider there. <clears throat> now, baiting out exchanges. This applies to teams that are pushing, but this is not teams initiating an Uber exchange. There are going to be times, and we're going to talk about uh, exchanges when you're the defending team later uh, well, after this. There's going to be times where what an, the enemy team wants to do is exchange, and of course you you don't want to to give them that. So what you do is you make an exchange look just good enough for them to take, and then the second they take it, you just kite it, uh, don't use, just get out of there completely safely, and suddenly you just have that, right? So a major example of this would be um, Gully Wash, the counter sack hold on uh, second, or I guess last. So the team that sacked into last, right? Usually a double sack, they're down two, and usually the way teams will counter sack off of their own last is bring their heals, bring their combo, and their soldier, sometimes both soldiers, um, into river, and just hard pressure the combo there, either send a soldier through river, or maybe they get through shutter, or baby door, or, or what have you, the rumor can do whatever for their sack, but um, you bring your heals into river to hard pressure them, and if you get to aggro with that pressure, then that team gets to take an exchange, and suddenly, like, you don't really get to sack anymore because, you know, both teams are using Uber and the situation kind of resets. So, knowing that they might want to take an exchange if you get too aggro, you get just aggro enough to where you're not caught and you won't have to use if they use, but they might want to go for it because it looks just good enough for them. So that's, that's what baiting out an exchange is. Um, it's, yeah, it's an important skill. Um... And it's going to help a lot in those situations where a exchange from the other team would really like help them out, really like release the pressure that you've built up. And yeah, it's it's a way to bait that out and make what was looking like a good plan for them into Uber does that a bad plan. Um, on top of this, let's talk about dropping your demo. And as a demo player. Um, it pains me to say this because demos get dropped in a lot of Ubers and demo is a class that gets dropped accidentally a lot as well, which it sucks when it happens. But when it comes to exchange situations or teams trying to take that exchange, um, there can be a lot of value in dropping your demo man. So let's try to invent I swear I came to process for a reason, but we'll try to invent a case here on process. Um, so, let us picture a case here of pushing into process two. Um, let's say the other team is down two players, right? So in a case like this, and we might actually talk about this later. In a case like this, um, you're trying to pressure in Let's say through choke. They have no pick, so we're going to start to try and go choke. And, um, of course, they're down two, so it's going to be very difficult for them to hold this. Uh, but if they exchange, they might uh, be able to, which we'll talk about later, of course, when we talk about the defensive side of exchanges. Um, so let's imagine we start pushing forward, and then we see their combo is on point, very aggro. That's like a big 
um, not red flag, but big like alarm bells of like, okay, they're like kind of just caught right now. Um, something very important to know. And then suddenly they drop off and start walking forward. Like, okay, they are obviously going for an exchange. We need to start baiting this out. And let's say the demo is too far forward. They're probably going to die to this exchange. In a case like this, if your combo is completely safe, or your medic and, and pocket scout rather, um, are completely safe, everyone else is like relatively safe. You're not going to like lose some crazy numbers. Um, and you know that the only thing this Uber could ever kill is your demo then by all means, absolutely just let them die for it. Uh, because if you get that force in exchange for just a demo pick, suddenly you're on a position where you can still probably push into two, but let's say like they get their soldier spawners and you can't, uh, that's totally fine. You just wait for your demo and you have full add, plenty of time to rotate doors, do whatever. Maybe you come sewer, dry through sewer, and then you still have add for last. Suddenly you get a add, push into last with your demo alive just because you dropped your demo there instead of saving them in what was a much worse exchange uh, or rather it would have been like a somewhat neutral exchange because they would have been able to get that force on the demo and then maybe get out like lower lobby or something um, so you turned what would have been a pretty like neutral exchange which is exactly what they're looking for a neutral situation with the the two-player disad that they were facing um and you instead turn that into an ad push into last uh, because you dropped your demo. So there are definitely cases where dropping your demo is advantageous in order to get Uber ad. Mostly cases where you know you're not going to have to use. Um, there's no like crazy player disad or anything like that. It's just a matter of they're taking the Uber. We didn't bait it well enough to where our demo is going to live. Um, so it's fine. Just let them die and preserve the ad and just repush with the ad after things slow down uh and yeah everyone's happy except the demo but if the demo knows that it's it's what has to happen then they can be happy as well okay what else where are we on okay yes uh repopping on an overextended team when their uber fades so again exchanges can be kind of nebulous but if you adequately there, there are times where you might adequately bait out an exchange, but not like perfectly. Um, but if the other team is not being mindful about their post duper positioning and really chasing for that force. Um, so let's say, we can come up with a different example. Let's just flip it around. Uh, let's say it's pushing it to mid. Mid is a nice big open point. Um, and let's say, same situation, they're down two, so they're not really gonna be able to hold mid, but they might be able to go for an exchange and, and do so. Um, so let's say they try and take an exchange and choke. Um, and let's say your demo has good movement and is able to dodge a couple scatters. Um, and you're, you're happy, right? But, even if you don't have to use here to keep anyone alive, it might be worth using just to chase because the second that their exchange or attempted exchange goes poorly, you can kind of uh, conceptualize the game state as, okay, well now it's just full add. And what do you do if it's full add and their combo is just on point? Well, you use your Uber and catch them. So um, in cases like that, yeah, absolutely. You can just use and catch them and then not only have whatever point you were pushing into but you preserve ad as well because their med dies and yours doesn't so if a an attempted enemy exchange goes poorly for them then yeah you're, you're tasked with the decision of whether to use back or not if they are caught you should use um if not then just just hold the full ad and, and be perfectly happy going forward with it um so, big warning here. Um, I've seen a lot of teams, and especially newer teams, um, that might not be so used to sacking, might not be super used to a ton of stuff, kind of just default to exchanges as their game plan. Um, this is an inherently risky plan, of course, because if you're the one initiating exchanges like we've talked about, you're running the risk... A oh, little ramp slide there. You're running the risk of... You know, not getting that force, putting yourself in a bad position. Um, and a lot of the time, honestly, like, 
honestly, if you're taking an aggro exchange without any like major advantage going into it, um, as long as the other team is playing correctly, it should amount to nothing really. It should amount to kind of the same situation as before with the team, each team having the same amount of space and positioning as before, but just with Ubers out of the way, right? Um, so it's not a good default plan. Also, um, something I've noticed is teams going for exchanges when they really don't make sense as the offensive team um, and actually squandering advantages as they had as a result. So what do I mean by this? Um, let us picture the same example into two. They're down two. Their beam is very forward, but this time they aren't trying to go for an exchange. They're just kind of trying to pressure or something. Um, in a, actually, let's let's talk about last because teams love to exchange into last. So down two at last. That means there's at least a doorway that's just not being held. Um, and I know this is process last. So let's just imagine they don't have a sniper. Your team should absolutely be able to take space through a doorway, pressure, whether this be three, whether, or excuse me, four, whether this be five, maybe even one or two. Um, but you can take space, you can pressure really hard, um, potentially get some cat pressure going. Um, at the very least, very base minimum, worst you're ever getting is some deep pressure, deeper than you would have if they weren't down two and a, a sack that would be a better sack than if they weren't down to, right? So, you know, worst case scenario, you still get a better sack out of it than uh, you otherwise would have, assuming you don't just like super beef and like lose a bunch of players randomly, uh, as long as everyone's playing pretty adequately. Okay, um, so a good sack off. But a lot of the time this can be converted into maybe another pick, maybe a soldier's still trying to hold the door close despite being down two and they're a pick. Again, cat pressure, you might be able to just get a force outright off the fact that your scout is capping and is trapped off and you just need to use to stop the point and not just lose their own instantly. Um, really, really good things can come out of a situation like a team being down two on their own last. Um, so if, for instance, your scout just decides to blow it through three and take an exchange into them, this suddenly squanders your entire advantage, right? because all this scout is effectively doing, or all this exchange, I should say, is, is essentially doing, is giving the other team a bunch of time to get those two spawners and actually get a hold going on last. Because you're not really gonna be able to stay in uh, super deep for the Uber, because not only are you likely using first, because you're taking it aggressively into them, but uh, they're gonna have like solid positioning and you just can't end so deep. You, you're gonna have to end kind of passively. And from here, like if they get their spawners, this is just no different than if I was gonna peek this doorway on even Ubers, even players. Uh, so all you're really doing is taking a really strong advantage that could have just straight up been around right then and there, but at the very least is a pretty strong chance at a force if played properly. And you're taking that and turning it into basically just even Ubers on last. So, um, that's why there can be a big warning label on just default exchanging, uh, you know, regularly because, uh, you need to know what exchanges are for, what they're doing, um, because, um, you can end up squandering your own advantages by going for exchanges when you already have a pretty strong advantage. Uh, in a case like not last, if it was another point, um, let's say it's on mid, um, and they're just holding very aggro spamming really hard uh in a case like this if their damage is this close and they're down two still uh there's again doors not being held whether that be it or sewer and at that point it's a matter of flooding that doorway uh, alongside combo pressure and then just getting a force straight up right uh, you can just bomb a soldier from IT or sewer or something, whatever's not being held, and then get that force, because that med is kind of in no man's land, um, or bomb the demo, just do whatever with your bomb. It's going to be valuable because they're just out of position, considering the state of things and the state of players. You don't really want to just be taking exchange into them um, that just lets them use, leave, and then, sure, you get the point, but you were going to get much more, right? So, yeah. Be careful about taking exchanges when you have big advantages. Um, think about, is there another way to take advantage of that advantage? 
poor phrasing, but you get the you get the picture. Um, okay, let's talk about defensive exchanges. So this is when you are the defending team in, in an interaction. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean you are the team that's always using Uber in reply. Sometimes you are the one in initiating the Uber exchange. And the classic example I gave was on uh, process two here of just, you know, they're trying to get through choke off some advantage, whether that be picks or what have you, uh, maybe even damage. And you just walk forward, take the exchange into them, get the force, get whatever. Um, and then, you know, have solid positioning for your post and you should be happy and hopefully uh, you might be able to hold the point as a result. So it's a good stalling measure a lot of the time uh, an Uber exchange is. So if you need to wait for spawners uh, or you need to, you know, wait or like give your player some time to, to heal up or reload or, or what have you, then an Uber exchange can be a good idea there. Or if they're just like really deep pressuring and you know you're likely to get forced or they're just like way too deep. It's like, no, we need to like go check that. Then taking an exchange into them can be good. Um, yeah. As far as this goes, um, really important to know whose exchange is better because uh, in this case on, on process two, whether you end like kind of aggro in their choke or just a pretty neutral but you know powerful high ground position or really passive ready to leave is all going to be up to how well that exchange is going. And what that means is just like if anyone dies in the exchange on either team that's going to determine things. Of course, whichever Uber is going to end sooner or later, uh, maybe you, you know you have a tough time getting the force and their Uber is going to end much later. You're going to have to make sure you're not caught to that. Or maybe uh, you know you just instantly, they instantly repop and uh, things are kind of neutral. So all, all these different things are going to inform uh, which exchange is better and should inform your post Uber positioning as a result. Um, defensively, so if you are taking exchange defensively and they are the ones initiating the exchange, um, you might need to focus more on minimizing flashes than they would because likely they're just running one guy through uh, and not gonna be flashing at all versus your team. Uh, maybe they're like really clumped up and there's like a lot of targets. Um, you're going to really need to prioritize, you know, who you flash, who you don't. Uh, the players that should get flash should, should get out of there. Um, right. And then something we already touched on. Uh, it's not going to be completely passive. You might need to be using first as a team approaches. Um, and I should throw in here as well. A lot of defensive exchanges um, are... It's going to be dependent on the kind of map geometry, what what part of the map you're on. So the example I was giving here in process two was a scout, just because this is such a wide open area um, that it makes sense to want to have a lot of mobility there. Uh, versus if it was on last, and a team was trying to like hard pressure or maybe even just push through one or something. Uh, this is actually a, an example that you do see in game. Um, of a team that might be like down two picks maybe even down three picks on last and the other team just picks the wrong door they just pick one and it's the wrong door for what i'm about to talk about uh if you're ready for it then you can absolutely just take an exchange stuff this doorway buy time for your spawners boom just uh disadvantage gone fantastic exchange defensively from the team on last here this is not something you would want to take on a scout like this is so closed and tight that you want to take that on an explosives class and usually the best explosives class for exchanges are soldiers um there are some holds where you might exchange on your demo um i can think of like the snake water last counter sack you usually play a demo on bridge and you can bring your beam there and if they just hard pressure lobby then you can just exchange into them and it's usually okay. But uh, we'll talk about classes for exchanges a bit later. But uh, yeah, tight closed areas, definitely um, gonna be soldier territory for exchanges and much more open areas of the map are gonna be more designated for scout exchanges. And this is for, you know, mostly defensive exchanges 
where uh, teams are trying to push into you and you're trying to stop them from pushing. Okay, now let's talk about communication. Communication is extremely important during an exchange and it's very simple. Someone involved in the exchange, this can be a medic, this can be a pocket scout, in the cases of it being a soldier or a demo or, or whatever, it can be any of those classes. Someone in the exchange needs to communicate some very simple things. Who the Uber exchange is better for, if anyone at all. So if it's better for them, that's something the team should know because the team is not going to know what's going on with the exchange uh, for reasons we'll talk about later. Uh, you need to know where your uber is ending very important every single time you ever basically any single time you ever take an uber um in any circumstance you need to call where it's ending because that is just important info for your team it costs nothing to say it's just a good habit to to communicate and exchanges are no different and in some cases you might want to communicate where their uber is ending as well um, so, for example, if it's a better exchange for you and the other team might be trying to leave um, because you just have like such a better exchange and maybe they even are caught, then it might be very important to, to communicate where they're trying to leave, where their Uber's ending, stuff like that, for like soldiers to be able to bomb that and try and catch those players. So, very simple things. Just say which exchange is better. This is, of course, like a, a value judgment, but... Uh, a lot of the time it's going to be a roughly even exchange, assuming things are, are normal, but uh, yeah. And this doesn't mean the post. So if you're exchanging and get like, you know, the, their flank dies, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean the exchange is better for you. Um, if it's a roughly even exchange with like even number of flashes and kind of roughly even positionings, um, that just means your post is going to be very good. So it's still like going to be a, a roughly even exchange there. Um, yeah, and then where you end, where they end, in, in some cases where they end, because sometimes it, it doesn't matter that much, um, but where you end every single time. Okay, now let's talk about team play. So who is in the exchange? This is something we already touched on. Um, yeah, demo is not a good exchange class just because you can't do anything <laughs> really at all. Um, you're a big liability because you're pretty slow. Um, you're sure you can, in theory, like, try to control some, you know, positioning in the post with sticks, but that's usually not very good, and it's more important to have all your ammo reloaded when the post fight begins, because that's when you actually start doing damage, versus, you know, demos tend to have, like, this uber uh, syndrome, I call it, where they're so used to taking aggro ubers with add and just shooting everything as fast as possible to try and catch players get as much value with the uber as possible that anytime they are ubered they think they should just be shooting a lot when in an exchange if you just like carpet a bunch of stuff uh most of the time that's just not going to do anything so demo is just not a great class for exchanges uh, big liability you can't reliably jump out like a soldier can because any sticky can get shot by a scout it can get knocked by a soldier before you can ever jump on it um so, yeah, you can just be a big sitting duck. That doesn't mean demos are never exchanged on. Um, a lot of the time, I mean, I already mentioned, like, some cases where you might take an aggro demo exchange, like, in a specific type of hold might be set up for that. Um, it's not, you know, catastrophically bad. But most of the time, if you're taking an exchange on your demo, it's going to be one defensively where they're just beelining for your demo to get the force. And... Um, in 5 CP, in those cases, you might be able to drop your demo. Uh, in Koth, you really shouldn't ever drop your demo in an exchange. Um, and yeah, in those cases, it might just be on your demo, and, and that's that. Um, they might need to jump out just to avoid excess flashes, but if you don't have to, you know, flash your scout at all, then you could just keep it on your demo. Um, Pocket Scout, kind of the, the king of exchanges, very fast, already with the medic all the time, already should have a lot of cohesion with the combo, um, should be kind of the primary voice for exchanges, uh, assuming, you know, they're involved in it, and should be very familiar with taking exchanges when it's good, when it's bad. Uh, learning exchanges is an important skill for Pocket Scout, so Pocket Scout is kind of the go-to exchange class. Um, yeah. 
pocket soldier we already touched on a bit um should be kind of like kind of assumes the role of the pocket scout when it comes to exchanges if it's a tight choke point tight corridor um stuff like that um they're the ones that's going to start calling for that rather than the pocket scout because of course the pocket scout's just not involved they they can have an opinion i guess but it, it should be up to the pocket soldier um and when i say they should have an opinion i don't mean they should be calling on behalf because they have an opinion i mean uh, they can think whatever they want but it's the pocket soldier calling that stuff another thing to note is sometimes if you're taking aggro or initiating exchanges um Sometimes scouts just beef and you miss. Uh, sometimes the scout gets like super juggled. And if you're having a reliably tough time getting another team to force um, and it's leading to your exchanges just being really bad as a result, um, if that's consistent against a specific team or something, then it's totally fine to include a pocket soldier in an Uber. Um, this is a big thing on Koth where if you're just having a tough time getting that that force on koth because remember you re like getting those ubers out of the way is, is pretty important before capping the point uh it's totally fine to just bomb in a pocket soldier splash is like very very good at getting those forces and the pocket soldier should be perfectly healthy to just jump out and, and stay safe uh afterwards so of course you are sacrificing uh probably two flashes maybe even more for it which is a full second or more off the uber but uh, if that's the difference between them forcing and holding on to that Uber for much later, or maybe not even using it all, then it's totally worth it. Um, everyone else, just bait. No, no point in fighting during the exchange. People are going to be invincible. Um, someone who might look vulnerable that you then get and roll for 150 can just get flashed, and then everyone looks at you and kills you. Um, just stay alive. This is a big mistake I see a lot of teams make is when an Uber exchange is going on, the team, the players not involved in the Uber are getting involved in, not the Uber necessarily, not getting flashed, but getting involved in the fight. Um, that is not good <laughs> because you're just a liability. You're just a target for Ubered players to shoot at uh, because your team is Ubered. They can't really shoot at them. So let the Uber exchange do what it does. Man, they are doing construction. I hope that's not uh, showing up. <laughs> Let the Uber Exchange do what it does. Let it try and get as much value as it can. And then you want to be healthy, you want to be reloaded, and you want to be in a good position to take that post fight. So if I'm a demo, and um, let's imagine... Man, Process was really not the map. <laughs> this is this map's so open, it's hard to uh, think of good exchange situations on it. But uh, let's imagine that you're like down a few players here and similar situation. You just want to exchange, hold the door, buy time for your spawners. As a demo, I want to just not be involved in this exchange. I might, you know, be watching a door or something. My job is going to be uh, just have ammo for this post fight. Because if I have all eight stickies loaded and even if the exchange is worse for us um, and we have to end like a little bit further back, uh, and maybe they start to get a bit of space choke. I'm just here. I'm just a demo with full ammo like they are not getting through and Just because I baited that exchange and I have ammo for the post likewise if uh, A soldier is adequately baiting the exchange. They're full HP. They're ready to bomb anyone that might be caught um, not a lot of teams are that mindful about where their uber ends and if you are correctly baiting the exchange and not taking stupid fights for no reason then you're going to be healthy reloaded and ready to collapse on any players in that post so it's really really important if you're not involved in the exchange just be as prepared as possible to make the post fight as important as possible because every exchange tends to have kind of two stages where there's the exchange itself the things that happen in the exchange but most of the time that doesn't convert directly into anything unless you know, one exchange, one team's exchange is just so much like insanely better than the others that it makes a huge difference. Most of the time, exchanges end kind of neutrally, and then it's just a matter of what advantages that exchange generated for you to now play off of. Um, so maybe it's still player add, maybe you got a pick with the exchange, stuff like that. Then you play that off the post um, when they no longer have an uber to like stuff your doorway or whatever so think of it in those terms there's really nothing for you to do 
as a um, as a class not involved in the exchange during the exchange. Wait for that second stage, wait for the post fight to actually get involved, and then you can provide value for your team. Okay, I think that's pretty, I mean, that's all the notes I had. I think that's pretty exhaustive explanation on exchanges. Um, they can be pretty nebulous. I tried to cover pretty much everything there. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll see some teams playing some good exchanges. Um, playing some good post-fight exchanges. Uh, just good stuff overall. So I'm going to cut it there. Uh, hopefully this was useful.